Hello class! This continues our discussion on Philippine tax remedies. I have prepared the following tabs on BIR rules and memorandums for us to walk through. So first we will have the government's rate program or run against tax evaders. We'll have the frequently asked questions and the corresponding Revenue Memorandum Order 27-2010. Our BIR website also has portals for e-complaint rate and uh, e-complaint no OR. Next, we'll go through the audit investigation of individual and non-individual taxpayers by our regional assessment divisions. The same revenue memorandum order was further amended by revenue memorandum order 32-2019. Aside from our letters of authority, we'll also go through what they call, uh, uh, no, first, we also discuss the proper service of assessment notices. As you have noted, there are several cases which on which the BIR lost because of uh, rulings on the improper service of assessment notices. Also, aside from the letter of authority, is what we call tax verification notices. Of course, after all of these assessments or audit, BIR gets to prescribe penalties. We'll go through this. And the next, all is not lost. We have here the taxpayer's bill of rights updated as of september 2018 we'll go through the uh, home page of the court of tax appeals very important that you understand the cta's jurisdiction finally should government prevail then they have the following remedies for the collection of Accounts receivable, delinquent accounts, and uh, how we can request for lifting of warrant of garnishment, notice of tax lien, etc. And then, of course, as taxpayers, we also get to claim for refunds for VAT and refund and capital gains tax or creditable withholding tax. So what is run after tax evaders? This is a program initiated by the DOF and BIR to investigate and use, take note of the word being used, prosecute individual and entities engaged in tax evasion and other criminal violations of the NIRC. Among the objectives are generate maximum deterrent effect, enhance voluntary compliance among taxpayers, and promote confidence in the public of the public in the tax system. Note, this is different from the other programs of BIR, which is primarily designed for revenue generating purposes. The purpose here is to prosecute and convict tax evaders. What is tax evasion and or tax fraud? Basically, you have your taxpayer using illegal or fraudulent means to defeat or lessen the payment of a tax. Who are charged under the rate program? Any person, association, partnership, company, found to have committed a violation of the provisions of the NIRC. Now, here is a very important statement. 
in the case of associations, partnerships, or corporations, penalty shall be imposed on the partner, president, general manager, branch manager, treasurer, or officer in charge and employee responsible for the violation. So what are these fraudulent activities? Among those are failure to file tax return, failure to pay taxes, deliberate under declaration by more than 30% of that declared, hiding or transferring assets or income, non-remittance of withholding taxes. As to deductions, deliberate overstatement of the amount of deduction by more than 30% of actual deductions. Claiming of personal expenses as business expense and claiming false deductions. Other violation, use of fake car and tax clearance certificate. Failure to register with the BIR. Keeping more than one set of books of accounts and making false entries in the books and records. So, what are the effects of fraud under the NIRC? You have the following. So, civil penalties resulting to the imposition of 50% surcharge. Criminal penalties resulting to the imposition of penal sanctions of imprisonment and fine upon conviction by the judicial courts. Now your BIR gets to assess and collect within 10 years from date of discovery. And then fraud cases cannot be the subject of compromise. So sources of rate cases would be your usual or routine audit examination of tax returns by BIR. Also, confidential information by informers. Third party information. Referrals from other government agencies and newspaper reports. Procedures in developing tax fraud cases. They start off with a preliminary investigation to establish the prima facie existence of fraud. This includes verification of the allegations of confidential information and complaint filed. Once there is prima facie existence of fraud, a formal investigation is initiated by a letter of authority against such taxpayer. There are instances where the LOA is not anymore needed such as non-filing of tax returns and unlawful pursuit of business. After investigation and the existence of fraud is determined, criminal case for tax evasion is filed before the DOJ. So what methods are used by our government to prove Fraud, that would be the direct approach method or the use of direct evidence and the indirect approach method. To clarify what are these indirect approach methods, you have the net worth method or inventory method or net worth and expenditure method. So basically, your examiner here reconstructs income based on the theory that if the taxpayer's net worth increased in a given year compared to last year, uh, larger than his reported income, he has understated his income for that year. Expenditure method or excess cash expenditure method that the amount of money that taxpayer spends during a given year exceeds his reported income. Percentage method, computation whereby determinations are made, the use of percentages or ratios. So these ratios should be typical of the business under investigation by comparing it with similar businesses or situations. If your percentages does not add up or is not similar to uh, similar businesses, then there is possibility of fraud 
unit and value method, not the prime method of proof, determination of verification of gross receipts may be computed by applying price and profit figures to the known ascertainable quality of business done by the taxpayer. Okay, so these indirect approach methods are prime areas for possible uh, bar questions. Who will file the tax fraud cases before the DOJ? A sworn an investigation report and sworn affidavits shall be executed by our revenue officers. Where do you report if you suspect an individual or company not complying with tax laws? You can report by phone, by mail, or personal reporting to the nearest BAR office. Does BAR give any reward? Yes, you get to receive 10% of the surcharges. Fees recovered, fine or penalty imposed, or 1 million pesos, whichever is lower. So how do we report? We report it through here. The e-complaint, BAR has these e-services where you can uh, report tax evasion. So you have the e-complaint run after tax evaders portal and then the e-complaint no or so online complaint facility for non-issuance of official receipt now let's go over revenue memorandum number 27-2010 here under policies and procedures note that our government can conduct taxpayer lifestyle check to support the indirect methods that they can conduct during investigation. Also, our BIR can coordinate aside from the Department of Justice with the NBI and CIDG. Of course, memorandum of agreements shall be uh, done with these agencies. Also, our BIR can uh, expedite the development of cases by requ requesting information from their RDO or LTS within 15 working days for sufficient information. If our RDOs or large taxpayer service divisions does not uh, provide this information within 15 working days, then the proper administrative disciplinary action can be uh, imposed upon these BIR employees. Okay. Uh, of course, again, we have the issue once of letter of authority to facilitate the monitoring. Uh, this letter of authority shall be verified under the letter of authority monitoring system. Okay, next. Here, all LAs of great cases shall be signed by the uh, DCIR LIG or the special body for rate cases. Next, again, formal investigation. I think we've covered this uh, here. Should the taxpayer uh, submit to the assessment of our investigators, then using BAR Form 0605, the same taxpayer can pay the taxes and surcharges as imposed by the rate investigations. Evaluation of rate cases, and then prosecution of rate cases. 
Okay, civil remedies and crediting of collections. Uh, your investigator shall issue warrants of distraint and or levy, warrants of garnishment in order to protect the interests of the government over the tax liabilities of the taxpayer. We are done with the anti-tax evasion program of the BIR. Now let's have the usual revenue generating program, the BIR. We have here revenue memorandum order number 32-2018 prescribing the audit investigation of individual and non-individual taxpayers. So the objective is to improve voluntary compliance by individual and non-individual taxpayers belonging to the small category to generate additional revenues from this taxpayer through an audit to be conducted by revenue officers of the office audit sections of the regional offices. So here, electronic letters of authority shall be issued to cover the audit investigation of tax returns for taxable 20 taxable year 2017. The offices mandated are the following revenue region numbers. For taxpayers with gross sales or receipts with 10 million and below, 5 million and below, and 2 million and below. So note that this is all about uh, going after or auditing small taxpayers. So one ELA shall be issued for each taxable year to include all internal revenue tax liabilities of the taxpayer with some exceptions. So how shall this be done? The audit of cases issued under this order shall be conducted without field investigation. So your revenue officers are not required to go to the to conduct the audit investigation within the taxpayer's premises. So what they will do instead is that the Chief Assessment Division shall retrieve copies of manually filed and electronically submitted tax returns through the EFPS or EBIR forms for taxable year 2017 as long as these taxes are within the prescribed threshold which is practically all the small taxpayers because it was 10 million and below, 5 million and below, and 2 million and below. The electronic letter of authority monitoring system shall be used in the request, approval, and issuance of ELAs, as well as the reporting of the accomplishment on the ELAs issued. Each revenue officer shall have at any given time 15 cases. So meaning, uh, this will be subject to replenishment after submission of the report of investigation slash closure of each case. So the report of investigation should be submitted to the review and evaluation section within 90 days from the issuance of the ELA. So you have work cut out for the revenue officers. Next, the ELA, together with the notice for presentation, submission of documents records, with checklist of requirements, may, note the use of the word may, be delivered personally to the taxpayer by a BIR employee, duly authorized for the purpose, who may be the revenue officer assigned or another employee with written authority authorization or delivered through a courier company. The concerned taxpayer will be given 10 days from receipt of the notice to present submit required documents. If the taxpayer does not comply with the notice, there is a reminder letter that will be sent after the lapse of the 10-day period. In case the requested documents are not presented still within five days from receipt of the reminder letter, a memorandum report should be prepared recommending the issuance of subpoena duces tecum. 
no further extension for presentation shall be allowed. In case the ELA notice or letter is sent through courier company, the envelope should be properly addressed with the following stamp on it. Just in case there is a return to sender uh, situation like moved out, unknown, refused to accept, no one to receive, or insufficient, insufficient address. So here, our Chief Assessment Division should submit the following reports to the assistant, assistant Commissioner. The ELAs issued, accomplishment of the office, report on ELAs issued that were canceled, canceled. ELAs referred to Legal Division, and report of final executory collectible and protested disputed assessments issued to taxpayers posted in form 40. So this one is for uh, audit for taxable year 2017. Next, we have Revenue Memorandum Order 32-2019, which is a repeat of RMO 32-2018. Only this time, it is for uh, tax returns for taxable year 2018. Next, we have Revenue Memorandum Order Number 48-2018, which prescribes additional cases to be covered by the Tax Verification Notice. So what is a Tax Verification Notice? This is actually uh, used instead of a letter of authority in the verification of claims for refund of job order personnel, claims arising from erroneous double payment of taxes, those that are considered as simple cases that do not require in-depth audit or investigation. So basically, uh, the following cases should be covered by your tax verification notice, regardless of amount. So estate tax cases where your decedent has no other tax liabilities, claim for tax refund, so VAT refund, and also those job order personnel who pay taxes and apparently at the end of the day they are not required to pay taxes if they do not reach the 250000 threshold, income threshold. Uh, claims arising for, from erroneous debt Double payment of taxes, including double payment of taxes due to system error or glitch. So the processing of this uh, verification uh, are short, such as 60 days from submission of completion of documents, 30 days for job order personnel claims, uh, double payment of taxes, 30 days. And then, no special treatment, your TVN shall be manually issued until such time that a tax verification notice system is in place. Next, this may be in response to the recent cases lost by our government due to improper service of notices. Is Revenue Memorandum Order Number 40-2019 prescribing procedures for the proper service of assessment notices. So the objectives are to prescribe proper procedures in the observance of the service of assessments notices such as the preliminary assessment notice, final assessment notice with a formal letter of demand, and final decision on disputed assessment. And to delineate the duties of offices responsible for this service. Okay, so your procedures would be assessment notice shall be served to the taxpayer through personal service by delivering personally a copy of this assessment notice at his registered or known address or where have, wherever he may be found. Known address shall mean a place other than the registered address where the business activities of the party are conducted or his place of residence. 
in if personal service is not possible uh, assessment penalty shall be served either by substituted service or by mail Substitu substituted service can only be resorted to when the party is not present at the registered or known address so how do we do this assessment notice may be left at the party's registered address with his clerk or with a person having charge thereof if the known address is a place of business activities then to his clerk or a person having charge thereof if it is residence leaving a copy with a person of legal age residing therein if no person is found the parties registered or known address the revenue officers concerned shall bring a barangay official with two disinterested persons to address to the address so that they may personally observe and attest to such absence assessment notice shall be given to said barangay official the fact shall be contained in the bottom portion of the assessment notice as well as the names official positions and signatures of the witnesses if the party is found to his in his at his registered address but refuses to receive the assessment notice the ro's concern shall bring a barangay official and two disinterested witnesses at the presence of in the presence of the party so that they may personally observe and attest to such act of refusal then again the assessment notice shall be given to the barangay official now when we say disinterested witnesses refers to person of legal age other than employees of the bir next is service by mail through registered mail with an instruction to the postmaster to return the mail to the sender within 10 days if undelivered or not or reputable professional courier service or ordinary mail if no registry or reputable courier is available the envelope must contain the following stamp should there be a return to sender to be printed, stamped at the back side of the envelope would be the instruction, if undelivered within 10 days, please return to BIR. Okay, next is an acknowledgement receipt to be indicated at the lower portion of the notice. Personal assessment to the service of assessment notice shall be effected by the RO assigned in the case. The server shall prepare the following written reports in triplicate copies, which shall be under oath before a notary public. So the following information should be indicated. The following documents as proof of service shall be provided by the server to the assessment division. Server shall prepare a written report and transmit the same together with applicable proof of service mentioned. Chief of Division shall maintain records of all assessment notices that were issued in the following details. So they are quite strict on uh, going through the uh, motions of properly serving their assessment notices next we go to the penalties prescribed by the nirc so for late filing of tax returns uh, the penalties in addition to the tax due in addition to the tax due would be surcharge of 25 percent for failure to file any tax return and pay the tax due filing a return other than with an internal revenue officer other than those with whom the return is required to be filed so wrong venue fail to 
failure to pay deficiency tax within the time prescribed for its payment in the notice of assessment, failure to pay the full or part of the amount tax shown in the return required to be filed under this code, plus interest of 20% from date prescribed for payment until the amount is fully paid plus compromise so compromise failure to file return supply correct accurate information pay tax withheld and remit tax and refund excess taxes withheld on compensation so we have the following compromise penalties from page 5 of Annex A of RMO 7-2015. So we have the violations, penalties imposed, and the additional compromise penalty. Penalties. Uh, failure to file certain information returns, such as statement or list, or keep any record or supply any information required by the code or by the commissioner on the date prescribed there for uh, okay wait 1000 pesos for each failure the aggregate amount imposed for such failures during a calendar year shall not exceed 25000 pesos Violation of other provisions, 1,000 pesos. Or suck for imprisonment of not more than six months or both. For the other side of the coin, let's have the taxpayer's bill of rights. But it starts off with taxpayer's obligations and privileges. So, under your general audit procedures, which begins as a electronic letter of authority is received by a taxpayer who has been selected for audit. So, again, uh, ELA, if you remember, is the authority of your revenue officer to examine the taxpayer's books and records for our particular period. It is electronically generated through the electronic letter, letter of authority monitoring system. So how many times can a taxpayer's books of accounts and records be subjected to examination? Uh, the said book shall be subject to examination for income tax purposes shall be made only once in a taxable year except in the following cases when there is fraud irregularity or mistakes when you yourself as taxpayer requests for the investigation when there is a need to verify the taxpayer's compliance with the holding tax laws and regulations when Taxpayer's capital gains tax liabilities must be verified. And the commissioner chooses to, exer to exercise his power under Section 5B of the NIRC to obtain information from other persons, in which case another or separate examination and inspection may be made. Okay, so how is a particular taxpayer selected? As you have seen earlier, small taxpayers are also um, being audited through the ELA uh, method. So um, this selection may vary from year to year. So earlier we saw RMOs for audit of 2017 and 2018 books of small taxpayers. For our rate or tax evasion, 
preliminary investigation commences upon receipt of third party information or motto proprio upon orders of the commissioner. Powers of our commissioner relative to the audit process obtain information to summon, examine, and take testimony of persons to make assessments and prescribe additional requirements <clears throat> for tax administration and enforcement. Who issues our ELA? I think we've gone through that earlier. Here, we have the notice of informal conference, written notice informing a taxpayer that findings of the audit conducted on his books of accounts and accounting records indicate additional taxes or deficiency assessments have to be paid. So after the audit, and there is imposition of deficiency assessments. This recommendation is communicated by the Bureau to the taxpayer by sending a notice of informal conference to give you the opportunity to present your side on the case. So this uh, informal conference should not go beyond 30 days from receipt of the notice. So this assessment, how long should it be done? An assessment must be made within three years from the last day prescribed by law for the filing of tax return. So if the tax is being subjected to assessment or from day, the day the return was filed, if filed late. But if there is false or fraudulent return, failure to file return 10 years from date of discovery. Period of assessment may be extended through the execution. So you as taxpayer shall execute a written waiver of the statute of lim limitations before the expiration of the prescriptive period to assess. This waiver buys you time to prove your case. Preliminary assessment notice again written communication informing you of your of the results of the audit that there is deficiency taxes showing details as i have shown you last meeting samples of this uh, preliminary assessment notices if you as taxpayer disagree with the findings you are given 15 days from receipt of the pad so very important that you Take note when you receive the PAN. PAN is no longer required for the following cases. So, when there is mathematical error, you have to memorize this. Discrepancy has been determined within the tax withheld and the amount actually remitted. Taxpayer opted to claim for refund or tax credit for excess creditable withholding tax. Excise tax due on excisable articles has not been paid. When an article locally purchased or imported by an exempt person, as such, but not limited to vehicles, capital equipment, machinery, spare parts, has been sold, traded, or transferred to non exempt persons. After the fan, you have the formal letter of demand together with the final assessment notice. So, if you as taxpayer fail to respond to the PAN within the prescribed period, then the PAN calling for payment of deficiency taxes, still stating the facts, the law, rules, and regulations, or jurisprudence on which the assessment is based. Okay. Uh, what is required? of you when you are being audited you must duly acknowledge receipt of all notices not just the ela affix on the ela his signature to indicate an indicate date of receipt present within the required time books of accounts related accounting records and then Submit necessary schedules as requested by the revenue officer. What if you cannot submit? 
if you cannot present the books of accounts, accounting records, and you want to request for more time to present these documents, then you will execute a waiver of the defense of prescription under the statute of limitations of the NIRC. This recourse does not apply when a subpoena ducis tecum has already been issued. So what is the waiver of the defense of prescription under the statute of limitations? This is your signed written statement executed before the expiration of the period to assess, collect, whereby the taxpayer conveys his agreement to extend within the specified future date. So it's a specific future date within which the Bureau may validly issue an assessment and or collect deficiency taxes. So you cannot, once you sign this document, you cannot invoke or put up a defense of prescription for assessment issued after the reglementary period. Now, if you do not agree with the assessment following an audit, you can protest the assessment. So, for PAN, you have 15 days. For the final letter demand and the final assessment notice, you have 30 days from receipt. Either through a request for reconsideration or a request for reinvestigation. What is the difference? For reconsideration, you're asking for a re-evaluation of the assessment on the basis of existing records without need of additional evidence. But for reinvestigation, you have newly discovered or additional evidence that you intend to present. So for reconsideration, no need for new evidence. For reinvestigation, you have newly discovered or additional evidence. So how should your protest look like so you should indicate nature of the protest whether reconsideration or investigation specifying desire for submission of newly discovered or additional evidence date of the assessment notice applicable rules regulations jurisprudence on which the protest is based now for investigation we stated that you have new evidence so you are given 60 days from date of filing to submit these documents. So this 60 day period does not apply for reconsideration. That's why it's very important for you to distinguish if your protest is a reconsideration or reinvestigation. Now, if you fail to file a valid protest within the 30 day period, the final assessment notice becomes final, executory, and demandable. That's why you never ignore final assessment notices. Now, if your protest is denied in whole or in part, very important, or is not acted upon by the commissioner, what are your alternative course of actions? You appeal to CTA through petition for review within 30 days from receipt of said decision. Elevate the protest request for reconsideration within 30 days from receipt of said decision. No request for investigation should be allowed in administrative appeal and only issues raised in the decision of the commissioner's duly authorized representative shall be entertained by the commissioner. Very important, if within 180 days from the date of filing of protest, you can appeal to the CTA within 30 days after the expiration of the 180-day period, Yun. or await the final decision of the uh, commissioner, duly authorized representative. But you should file out. Uh, we do not allow the 180 days to, uh, once the 180 days lapses, just count 30 days and make your appeal to the CTA.
within the 30-day period. So, if your request for reconsideration or administrative appeal is denied by the commissioner, you have 30 days after receipt to file an appeal before the CTA. If the taxpayer is not satisfied with the CTA's decision, if it's still if the decision was made by a division, may be appealed with the CTA and bank within 15 days from receipt. But if end bank you're still not satisfied, you appeal this decision to the Supreme Court within 15 days from receipt of the decision or resolution. So CTA, let's go first to the website of the CTA. You have here a very informative website from the CTA showing when the CTA was created and how it is organized and bank or in two divisions with three justices each as well as the jurisdiction of the CTA. When do you go to the CTA? You have to memorize this uh, jurisdiction. So decisions of the CIR, decisions of the Commissioner of Customs, automatic review cases with such, such decisions of the customs favorable to the taxpayer. Decisions of the Secretary of Trade and Industry in the case of non-agri products, commodity or article, or the Secretary of Agriculture in case of agricultural product, commodity or article. In connection with the imposition of the anti-dumping duty, countervailing duty, and safeguard duty. Now, your CTA has original appellate jurisdiction on the following criminal cases involving violations of the NIRC and the Tariff and Customs Code, decisions of the RTC on local taxes cases, decisions of the Central Board of Assessment Appeals in cases involving the assessment and taxation of real property, and the collection of internal revenue taxes and customs duties, the assessment of which have already become final. As a taxpayer, you can claim for refund or tax credit for erroneously or illegally collected taxes. You do so within two years from date of payment of the tax or penalty sought to be refunded. So, if you have filed a claim for refund and the Bureau has yet to render a decision, you can ele elevate this claim to the CTA. So, for the two-year prescriptive period, it is only the administrative claim that must be filed within the two-year prescriptive period. Proper reckoning of the two-year prescriptive period is the close of the taxable quarter where the relevant sale were made so we have discussed this actually the atlas in the San Roque ruling so 120 day plus 90 day period taxpayer can file an appeal within two ways file the judicial claim within 30 days after the commissioner denies the claim within the 120 day period or file the judicial claim within 30 days from the expiration of the 120-day period if the commissioner does not act within the 120-day period because it's already considered a, an act of denial of your claim. 30-day period always applies whether there is denial or inaction on the part of the commissioner. As a general rule, the 30-day appeal period is both mandatory and jurisdictional. An exception to the general rule, premature filing is allowed only if uh, for, uh, no, for the San Roque rule. Between, so before, um, for these periods only, premature filing is allowed. Uh, for subsequent ones, it is no longer allowed. Late filing is prohibited. Okay. 
for claim for VAT refund under the train law, such claim shall be acted upon within the 90-day period. Okay, so claim for VAT refund, we have it here. Uh, Revenue Memorandum Order Number 25-2019 prescribing the procedures to follow for the 90 period process 90 day period process to claim for the VAT refund so those are your rules we don't need to go through the details of which So, claim for refund of excessively or erroneously collected taxes should be made within two years from the date the taxes are paid. Both the administrative and judicial claims should be brought within the two-year prescriptive period. Otherwise, they shall forever be barred. May taxpayer may elevate his claim to the CTA if the two-year prescriptive period is about to expire and that the BIR has not yet made a decision on this claim. So what period must collection be made? Any internal revenue taxes that has been assessed within the period prescribed shall be collected within five years from date of assessment. In cases without assessment involving false or fraudulent, we have 10 years. Next, under this Taxpayers' Bill of Rights are the remedies of the Bureau in the audit process and collection of delinquent accounts. So your Bureau can compel you as taxpayers to produce your books of accounts and records in writing not more than two times. If after receipt of the second request there is failure to file then the bureau shall issue a sub subpoena duces teco so still if there is failure to comply the bir may file a criminal case for violation or for failure to obey summons when the person someone fails to appear Investigating officers may pr proceed to assess based on best evidence obtainable. Once the complaint affidavit has been filed, no prosecuting officer of the Bureau shall cause the withdrawal or dismissal of the case, notwithstanding subsequent sub submission of documents indicated in the subpoena. Alternatives are open to government for collection. This would be Distraint of personal property belonging to the taxpayer levy upon real property on the interest or in the rights of the real to real property, a civil action, tax lien, forfeiture, and criminal action. Either of these remedies or simultaneously <clears throat> may be pursued at the discretion of the authorities. Okay. What is this strength of personal property? Seizure by government of any goods, chattels, or effects, and personal property, including stocks, securities, debts, credits, bank accounts, and interest in known bank accounts, of course, and interest in and rights to personal property of the delinquent taxpayers. All seized personal property shall be sold at public auction after due notice. Garnishment is effected by a warrant of garnishment upon a third party who is in possession of the following. Your salaries, deposits in the bank, stocks and bonds from any private or government offices that safe keeps these certificates. Rental income from the lessee or tenant and trade and other receivables from customers and other debtors. The levy on real property is an act of seizure, but in this case, real property and interest in the rights of, to such property in order to enforce, enforce collection. So the property under levy shall be sold in public sale. 
So the levy is affected by filing a notice of levy. So BIR sends a notice of levy to the registry of deeds for the proper annotation in the title. What is the period to enforce collection of delinquent accounts? Five years from date of assessment. Uh, such cases shall be collected in five years from date of check was dishonored uh, pag installment. What remedies are available to the taxpayer in the settlement of his tax liabilities? So payment in full, including delinquency pay, uh, penalties. You can also pay in installment or pay through compromise settlement or payment through abatement of penalties. What can be compromised? Delinquent accounts, cases under administrative protest. Civil cases being disputed before the courts, collection cases filed by the courts. Uh, criminal violations other than those already filed in court or those involving criminal fraud. What may not be compromised are withholding tax cases, delinquent accounts duly approved with duly approved schedule of installment payment, criminal tax fraud cases, or already filed in court, cases with final reports of reinvestigation or reconsideration, resulting to the reduction of the original assessment and the taxpayer is agreeable to such findings. Cases which become final and executory after final judgment in court. Estate taxes were compromised is requested on the ground of financial incapacity. So, if there is compromise settlement, what is the basis for acceptance? Doubtful validity of the assessment, 40%. You can compromise up to 40%. Okay. If grounds is financial incapacity, 10% of the basic tax is the minimum offered amount. You have the following conditions under financial incapacity. When can the CIR abate or cancel tax liabilities if the tax appears to be unjust or excessively assessed? And if the administrative and collection cost does not justify, if the amount is too small, taxpayer is dead, leaving no distrainable or leviable property. Collection of delinquent accounts has prescribed. Limitation of assessment and collection of taxes, exemption. So again, 10 years if there is discovery of falsity, fraud, or omission. If before the expiration of the period, assessment of both the commissioner and taxpayer have agreed in writing to its assessment. So you as taxpayer agree. Any internal revenue tax has been assessed within the period of limitation as prescribed may be collected by distraint or levy within five years following the assessment of the tax. So just take note of the five-year period so uh, for collection of accounts receivable and delinquent accounts our BIR has the following uh, revenue memorandum order 35-2019 indicating the civil remedies for this collection so basically uh, this revenue memorandum order refers to unpaid revenues wherein there is already self-assessment of taxes but there, the check that was paid was dishonored or there was a request for installment and the second installment remains unpaid and then uh, there is duly validated unpaid tax due for tax return also uh, tax assessments that have become final executory but remains unpaid so your revenue officers are no longer required 
are no longer required to send to the delinquent taxpayers the corresponding preliminary collection letter and final notice before seizure. So what will happen to these delinquent accounts or receivables by the BIR? Basically, warrant of distraint or levy shall immediately be issued using the current format. Yeah. So basically, uh, there is a, a straightforward action for the collection of these accounts for this RMO. Now, the final RMO that we will discuss is RMO 41-2019, prescribing the process for the request of lifting of warrant of garnishment, notice of tax lien, notice of levy, and notice of encumbrance. So, if you as taxpayer has basically uh, need to, you need to ask for the lifting of those uh, levies and warrants, you will request for the issuance of notice of lifting. Now, when is this uh, issued? This is issued if there are there is full payment by the taxpayer of the unpaid tax liabilities, including all applicable delinquency penalties. And there is acceptance of the full payment of taxpayer's offer of compromise and subsequent transmittal recommendation for approval thereof. Full payment of the basic tax dues and subsequent approval of the abatement of penalties. Full or partial collection of original assessment as a result of reinvestigation or reconsideration of the assessment. Prescription of the Bureau's right to assess and collect the unpaid taxes and liabilities under the statute of limitations. Or the taxpayer has made an escrow account with any branch of the Bureau's authorized agent banks. Full destruction of the improvement of property subject to lien due to fortuitous event or the competent court has issued a final executory order for the lifting thereof or the seized property is no longer owned by the delinquent taxpayer due to disposal prior to its seizure lien or issuance of the notice of what is NOE again encumbrance all right. And the account garnished is for salaries of government employees, uh, instances considered meritorious, and all other cases considered meritorious, over which the commissioner in the interest of justice and pursuant to the doctrine of parents patriae may exercise his discretionary power. So you as taxpayer will just have to... Uh, comply with the necessary supporting documents invoking the above enumerated instances. So you could free up your property and move on with your life.